People have been coming to America for generations to start a new life for themselves and for their families. In the early years, they would come here and get on covered wagons and travel out west and south. They'd travel until they found a spot where they thought was a place they wanted to have their home. They would stop and clear land and start building their homes. Then little by little, other people would come to the same spot, and then more and more, and then pretty soon they'd start a town. The town kept growing and getting bigger and bigger, and pretty soon they was able to build themselves a church. And later on, they built a schoolhouse. They sent away and for a teacher to come and teach their children, and a young school teacher from Boston came to be that teacher. When she arrived, the schoolhouse wasn't completed yet, but she still went inside and taught the children why the men were still working on the schoolhouse. Finally, the very last thing was added to the schoolhouse. It was a bell. The bell originally came from Mr. Johansson from Sweden. He originally attended the bell to go on top of his barn to call his cattle in from the fields at night to the barn, but he thought it could be better used as a bell to call the children to school. So they put the bell on top of the school and dropped the ropes down inside, and then they climbed down and packed up their tools and went back to their farms. School finished that day, and <clears throat> the next morning, the young school teacher got up early, and she went to the schoolhouse, and she walked around the building, and she prayed to God and thanked God for giving her such a nice building to be able to teach the children in. Then she asked for God's guidance to give her the right knowledge to be able to teach the children the right things. Then she went back inside, and a little while later, she went over to the ropes, and she started ringing the school bell. Ding, 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 she rang the bell. Back then, school didn't start as early as they do now. The children had to finish all their chores in the farms first, and then they came to school to learn. So finally, all the children were there, and she started the lesson. And a little while into the lesson, she got a chill, and she walked over to the door, and she felt a breeze coming through the, the door. So she closed the door and all the windows in the schoolhouse. She went back to teaching, and a little while later, she got another chill. And she looked outside, and she could tell the, the things were starting to blow around a little bit more, and she saw a few float snowflakes. She didn't think much of that because there's still snow a lot of times in uh, early spring. So a short time later, she looked outside, and then she went to the door and opened the door. And by this time, there was a foot of snow on the ground. and The wind was picking up and the temperature was starting to drop. She told the children that it was too late for them to try to get home that day because they didn't have coats or anything. She said they'd have to stay there until their parents came to get them. So she asked the three older boys to go outside and bring in the wood that was cut laying alongside the building, and they did. They brought all the wood in they had, and there was only 21 logs. She knew that that wouldn't be very much if they had to spend the night there. She later sent the older boys back outside again and told them to release all the horses, take the saddles off and bring the saddle blankets inside in case they needed to use those to keep warm. So they came back in and they tried several times to get a fire going in the big potbelly stove and they couldn't. They didn't have enough kindling wood to get it started. So the teacher asked the three older boys to take the ax and chop up all the chairs and the tables and the desk. And they did, and they started the fire. Then she threw the first two logs in. <clears throat> the younger children were starting to become afraid, and some of them were crying for their parents. She told everyone to huddle around the, the stove and that she was going to read to them until their parents came. So she sat down and she reached up on her desk and she grabbed her Bible. 
the very first thing she read was the 23rd Psalms. The children all calmed down and relaxed. And then she went back and she started reading from first Psalms. And she was going to read all the way until the parents came. In the meantime, the parents had already figured out the problem and had started for the schoolhouse already. They loaded up supplies in their wagons to try to make it to the school. The school was put right in the middle of everything. Three miles south of the school was the town, and three miles north of the school were all the farms. Normally, it would just take in a short time to travel those three miles, but on this day, it was almost an impossible thing. By this time, there was over two feet of snow on the ground. The temperature was dropping rapidly, and the winds were howling, drifting the snow around. The parents struggled through the snow. The wagons kept getting stuck. Finally, they had to get out of the wagons, and some of the parents were pushing. Other ones were helping the horses pull. Some were even in front of the horses digging through the snow. But they knew they had to get to the school to get their children. The school teacher back at the school was still reading the Psalms, thinking about the parents. By now, the parents were starting to get worried themselves. They couldn't see anything. It was a complete whiteout. They couldn't hardly see the wagon in front of them. But they were still pushing through the snow. By now, the snow was up three feet. And they were almost, had exhausted all of their energy. They stopped for a moment and prayed to God to, for God to give them strength and to get them safe and keep their children safe. The school teacher stopped her reading for a moment and asked the three older boys again to do a favor for her. She asked them to go over and start ringing the school bell. So the boys didn't ask why, they just got up and started doing it. Ding, 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 ding. They're ringing the bell. The parents are still struggling to make it, and they were getting weaker by the moment. Then all of a sudden, one of the parents, hey, do you hear that? No, that's just the wind blowing around. No, listen. So they stopped for a moment, and they could hear it. They could hear the school bell echoing through the valley. Now they knew for sure that their children were still alive, and it gave them more strength and courage to go on. They knew by now they couldn't turn around and go back. They didn't know how far back it was, and they'd probably perish in the snow trying to get back to where they came from. So they kept going. They didn't even know if they were even still on the road because they couldn't see anything. But they had the urge to keep going for their children. The boys kept ringing the bell, ringing the bell. And then it was, it was starting to get dark. And the temperature was dropping more and more. And the snow just kept coming down. The wind was die, starting to die down a little bit. Then one of the mothers remembered that every night she would read from the Bible and sing a hymn. And then she'd tuck her children into bed and say prayers. So she starts singing a hymn to her children. And then another parent joined in, and then another, and then another. Pretty soon, all the parents from the one group were singing hymns to the children. The wind had died down enough where the parents at the other end heard the singing, and they started singing too. Then all of a sudden, hymns were echoing through the valley one of the young children inside the schoolhouse said, listen, angels. Another child said, no, that's just the wind blowing. She said, no, it's angels, listen. The teacher stopped reading for a moment and asked the boys to stop the bell. And she heard it. She said, children, those angels, your parents, they're singing to you, letting you know that they're on their way. So that gave the children a lot of encouragement that their families were on their way for them. This time, the boys really had a mission. They started ringing that bell as hard as they could. Ding, 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 ding. It rang and echoed through the valley. 
that kept getting darker and darker and colder and colder. They knew they were getting close to the school because they could hear the bell, but it was still a, a ways off. But they kept pushing through the snow. They don't know where their strength came from. They knew that the Lord was helping them push. Then all of a sudden, it was like someone turned a light switch on. The wind had died down, the clouds had left, all the stars filled the sky. A bright moon let off its moonbeams and it reflected off of the snow. Then all of a sudden, one of the parents says, look, the light. And the moonlight was reflecting off of the bell moving back and forth in the sky. It was like a lighthouse leading them right to the school. The parents kept pushing their way through the snow, and finally the first group of parents reached the schoolhouse. They had to shovel through all the snow to get to the front door. It was completely surrounded with snow. They opened the door, and there was their children, all huddled around the stove, keeping warm. The schoolhouse was still warm inside. The teacher just put the last two logs on the fire. They came inside and they started getting warm and rested up a little bit. And The boys kept ringing the bell because they knew that all the parents weren't there yet. So they kept ringing. Ding, 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 ding. The bell was echoing through the valley. Short time later, the other group of parents arrived at the school and they went inside and It was a joyous time for everybody. All the men warmed up a little bit, and then they went back outside and started unloading all the wagons with the supplies. They had brought extra blankets and clothes and food and some wood for the fire. The women fixed meal that night, and the pastor gave a prayer and thanked God for getting everyone there safe and for keeping everyone safe through this storm of the century. It didn't take them long to fall asleep that night. The parents were totally exhausted. They got up the next morning, and the women started fixing breakfast. The men went back outside, and they started shoveling around the wagons and the horses and started clearing out around the schoolhouse. They got up on the roof to push the snow off so the weight wouldn't cave the roof in. Then they realized that there was no way that they'd ever been able to see that school from the road. It was as if God took his hands and packed that snow around the schoolhouse to insulate it from the cold. From the road, they would just kept right on going, right on past the school, had it not been for that bell ringing. They came back inside and they had breakfast. They decided not to try to make it home that day. It was still pretty bad outside. It was warming up and the snow was melting, but it was still treacherous and they had enough supplies, so they thought that they would stay another day. So pastor told them that they should just go ahead and have their Easter pageant right there at the school. That Easter was just the next day. That they would have service that night. So the men went back outside and finished their snow and all the women and children were getting ready for the the pageant the rest of the day. They had their lunch, and then they decided to go ahead and have the pageant early. So afterwards, the pastor closed in prayer, and he thanked God again for keeping everyone safe. The next morning, the pastor was the first one to get up. He went over to the window, and he looked outside, and he saw that the sun was just starting to come up over the horizon. So he went over to the ropes that were hanging down from the ceiling and he started ringing the school bell. Ding, 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 he rang the bell. Woke everyone up. He told them that they were going to have an Easter sunrise service that morning for today was Easter. So they all got up and got ready and they went over and they knelt down and Pastor 
started his message. He finished and gave the closing prayer. And then he, they started singing the final hymn. And during that final hymn, one of the boys got up and started ringing the school bell. Ding, 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 the bell rang. The town has long since grown and got a lot bigger. They still have Easter sunrise service there every Easter morning on that hill overlooking the valley. That pastor gave his message. That one special Easter, he said that the bell that was ringing reminded him of Jesus, the good shepherd, who was calling his flock home. He said the teacher, as she rang, read the Bible to the children, that was the same as everyone going out and presenting the gospel to the world. He said that the parents singing hymns to their children was that as the, of the heavenly angels' choir, singing praises to God and glory on high. He then said that the moon reflecting off of the school bell as it rang reminded him about how Jesus is the light of the world, that he hung there and died on that cross for us. He rose from the dead so that all mankind could have everlasting life through him. So every Easter morning, the town has their sunrise service. The pastor does his message. He says the last prayer, and then they sing the last hymn. And as they're singing the last hymn, you can hear the school bell echoing in the valley. Ding, 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 ding. The schoolhouse is still there. It's a museum now. You can go there and learn the history of the town and hear that special story of that special Easter and hear about that young school teacher from Boston who saved the town from destruction. You look out the window of the schoolhouse and you'll see a gravesite with a fence around it and just a small headstone with a simple name on it and three pictures carved into the stone. The pictures on the stone are that of a Bible, a bell, and a music note. The teacher had asked that upon her passing that she wanted to be laid to rest there at the schoolyard. So the town did that. And then later on, the town, in honor of the teacher, renamed themselves. It was just a simple name, Charlotte. Charlotte. 